hi guys i hope you're good i hope you blessed i hope you are happy uh welcome back to my channel it's your sister again uh push amal thank you so so very much for subscribing and watching guys um that is like some kind of moral support and support from you guys that keeps me strong and keep on going to share my story yeah uh, like I said last time, we continue. The struggle is real <laughs> with regards to uh, um, uh, recording. You know, I'm still learning these things because, like I told you, I opened a YouTube channel in, I think, 2016. And I was doing something not far from what I'm doing now, but it was just about prayers. You know for women and all that so i had to come back to the initial plan which is to continue sharing my story with whoever wants to hear it yeah guys let's go okay we are today's episode is all about my journey to ghana my journey to meet devil of wednesday that's how his name translate his name is nana kwakobon sam Trans, it translates um, devil of Wednesday okay I was tired of doing the South African route and everything and everything and before I go to Ghana I need to tell you what happened I I was the younger traveling for all these things but I was really getting tired to be quite honest yes I wanted uh, whatever powers to help me work and finish these things for Abu Boko and I was just honoring both my Gokos and Alice but deep down in me I was tired of these things I was tired of everybody I just wanted my peace I just wanted my space you know but I was not getting that because I was Gogo called for the people I was Gogo called to help the sick to help the you, 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 you've heard my story and uh, uh, the desire, the greed to, to make sure that I do everything in order to have everything that I want, to have the powers, to have amatwasa and patience, to have everything sorted out just in one body. I was tired. I got born again while I was a healer. Confusing, I know. But that's how my story is. I got, I received the Lord Jesus. Yeah, I received the Lord Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior while I was still a traditional healer. I received him by mouth. All right. I confessed, received him as my Lord and personal healer while I was still doing these things because how it happened also, it, it, it's kind of, you know, let me just tell you, yeah, but to me, those are the th things that will never, nobody, nobody will ever convince me otherwise about God. Uh, my ex-husband had taken me back to, uh, to South, whereas uh, I practiced in, in Western Bama home, you see. Um, when I got there, for me, it was an escape of i just want to have peace you know yes i'm a healer but i want to have peace I'm, I'm tired of working i'm tired of i'm i'm tired of these things i'm tired of you know because i had questions like i was telling you all the time i always had questions i would travel i'll get these things but i always had questions and the other question was why should we continue going to our gobela why should we, we we continue kneeling down to him whereas i saw somewhere in the bible i was not an expert in the bible but my grandmother and my mother used to quote the bible they were church goers so i i knew of of exodus i knew of 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 the the commandments of god where he said we should kneel not kneel down to people so 
that was like why should we keep kneeling to these things why should we keep kneeling i'm just tired of everything you know? and i could not tell because everybody uh, perceived me to be this strong traditional healer this strong person i could not tell even one person that i'm just tired of these things i remember asking my brother my brother was drinking that day and i asked him that you know what let me ask you why would you keep having a voice in your heart telling you why are you kneeling to people that are not God? But the Bible says um, I should not kneel down. You know, my brother said, if something is not right in your heart and uh, like it doesn't sit well with you, leave it. Imagine a drunk person telling me that. But I continued, you know, I continued like there was no escape for me at that time. Then when my ex-husband took me back to South, something happened. I moved to South with, with uh, I had a, a trainee, one student. So I was walking, I left him in the house and I was taking a walk. I remember I was wearing a royal blue track suit. Blue to me has a very big significance because it, it reminds me of how I received Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. I just received him by mouth. Yeah. This one time I was walking in the street. I was exhausted. My husband takes me from my home where I'm comfortable. He brings me to this place, but he knows he works far. I'm not surrounded by people. I have to now start another territory of mine as a traditional healer in this new place. Does he understand what it takes a lot that is needed for me to start the site. Whew, I walked. As I was walking, it was a Sunday. There was a small Zozo uh, church, a uh, shack. Uh, there was a shack. And in that shack, they were singing. Church service, you know. And in my track suits, with my cigarettes in the pocket. I just said, you know what? Let me enter this church. I think I want to talk to God because I'm tired. And the only thing I want from God is simple. I want him to make sure that that trainee runs away because that I, I, I'm obliged, you know, that trainee, I needed to make sure that he finishes what he's doing, you know, but my heart was not there anymore. I didn't want to tell him that, you know what, my son, go. I'm tired. I didn't want to, at that time, I didn't want to fail him and let him fail his ancestors because me now was tired. I went inside that church. Mind you, I'm still a Sangoma. I went inside the church and as I entered that church, I'm telling you, I felt out of place, but... I just felt like you are here to, to deliver the burdens that you have. As I went inside the church, I prayed silently before entering this church. I said to God, God, if you make sure that he runs away, because you know when they run away, you, they have to pay a tariff. And after paying a tariff, it's like they owe you, you don't owe them. And it's like he's freed himself. You know, and he can't be forced when he runs away. So I entered the church and I said, it was uh, in 2012, August. I'm not sure about the day, but it was Sunday, 12, uh, 2012, August. I, I walked in that church. As I walked inside that church, I said, God, I don't want anything. I just want you to make sure that that boy runs away. I'll dedicate my life to you. I'll do something, you know. I'll start looking for you. But just make that boy run away. I'm tired. I got inside the church. As I entered the church, there was a, a, a pastor or a prophet from Cape Town. And remember, we were in track suits, so nobody basically could see my beats so and i'm wearing a track pant so i entered the church and they were praying as they were praying they were praying they were praying the the prophet from cape town looked at me and said you know what you're supposed to do just like that 
He prophesied everyone. And I was standing there. I didn't care about the lie, the queue of people in front of him. I was just standing there. I was minding my own business, talking to God the way I knew how. I said, Lord, you are there. If you exist, make sure that that boy runs. This prophet is here prophesying me. He's like, you know what you're supposed to do. There and there, I, I tore my, my beads. And that prophet came and prayed for me. They surrounded me and they prayed. There and there, I gave my life to Jesus. I was tired. And there was no family. But I felt that something was taken away from me. I felt relieved. But remember, I was still a young girl. I went back home. And he did it. I continued, friend. But no one can tell me anything. God is real. He listened. A wretched sinner. As I was. God delivered. God delivered. <laughs> My trainee's brother came to steal him. They ran away. <laughs> My dear, God gave me exactly what I asked for. That was the first time I started observing the times I asked something from God and he came through. Forgive my lighting and everything, but we continue. <laughs> I continued with me being a healer, but the burden of that boy was out. He was gone. Like I told you, I, I, I traveled to Ghana. I met uh, uh, this, this uh, guy I knew who had a snake, and he told me about Ghana. So, uh, because now I had gone back home, you know, I was not feeling normal. Yeah, I had to receive this Jesus. My training ran away. But me being that side was like something again is, is not normal. Something's wrong. I went back home. Right? And during that time, I know nothing about discipleship. I know nothing about, you know maturing in the journey of salvation i know nothing about it for me i received jesus yes cool 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 i still live my normal life then i went to ghana time came i went to ghana i went back home continued with my normal self just not with the train trainees because you know um the journey of trainees is another different thing and it's it adds to to what you go through as an individual nyanga you know it adds because it's like you're a principal and they rely on you for certain things you know it's like you need to split yourself in so many different people and different times which is for me was tiring yet i was the one traveling out 
or this is. I went to Ghana. I met Kwaku Bonsam. Devil of Wednesday. <laughs> hey! Gosh! When I saw Kwaku, because Kwaku and I, we used to video call each other. At some point, he had a, a beat, a red and white beat. You know, I was calling him mysteriously one day. He's wearing a red and white bead. I know those type of beads are South African traditions. And then for me, it was like, wow. And he's like, you see, I'm preparing for you to come. Because he spoke a lot about that. Didn't know it was a tactic. I went to Ghana. The boys came to fetch me from the airport. <laughs> I was supposed to stay a, a week in Ghana, but I stayed for one month, two weeks in Ghana. In fact, Kwaku Bonsam didn't want me to come. He wanted to open a shrine for me in Kumasi. He, he runs his, his other shrine in Accra, where I went. He has uh, another one in Kumasi. He wanted to open an I see this man. <laughs> when I saw him, I didn't look at him straight. It's scary. You know? But when he was talking, something was like, nah, you can't get scared of this person. This is just an ordinary man. He's got burn uh, scars from being bent, burn scars. Burn scores, but he is an ordinary man. You've seen far worse. You can't be scared of this man. Then I looked at him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I looked at him. Yes. You know, bravery. <laughs> and he was like, huh, how are you? I'm fine. I'm good. How are you, Nana? Me. Uh, at first, sir, Nana, because I can pick everybody's calling him Nana, 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 Nana. So he said, you are welcome, you are welcome. He's a very, Kwaku Bonsam is a very friendly guy. Very, very nice person in person, you know. So he's welcoming, you know. He introduces me to everybody. I met his wives. I met his uh, sons. I met his everybody because Kaku has a lot of boys that work with him so he shows me uh the shrines where we will be working and he takes me to because he's got this house here one two three his house again it's like he's got houses two three houses in that row so the shrine is here and everything and then his patients and him have they sleep on uh, on the third or oh, the third house the other house apart from the one that has gods and shrines so that house this is where now he is building a three story if not i confuse these numbers it's a th i think it's a three story shrine <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, so we go. It shows me where I'm going to sleep. Ghana is beautiful. I don't need to lie about that, but that's not what I'm talking about, Ghana. Hmm? Uh, it shows me where he's going to sleep. I, I meet a girl there who makes me feel comfortable. Uh, and the wife as well. One of the wives was very nice. I shouldn't lie. I meet beautiful and lovely women there. And he goes with me to his... His... Uh, a room. How? A mini bachelor. Something like that. Um, and then he says, let us talk. You know? I tell him, like I told you on the phone, this is what I want. And he's like, uh, the people that you came here for will not be able to eat your money. 
because I will give you uh, something that may cut off your years. You won't be able to enjoy your money and the family that brought you here is, is not going to be able to enjoy your money. Let me do something and give you gods that you will take to South Africa that will help you work, you know. And then I, I become like a, a, a spiritual daughter of Kwaku Bonsam. Now he has to train me. Now he has to show me things. Now he has to work with me. And right there and then, I am started off treatment, cleansing treatment. He gives me a calabash. A calabash with um, a hep that I need to bath with you know take a like i need to bathe myself with it for a thousand times <laughs> calabash i'm not talking about calabash I'm talking about a small clay pot like this with um with the help my dear i need to to bathe a thousand times In the process of few days that I'm giving, this thing is getting fermented, it's getting rotten, and I need to bath with it. He gave me a white cloth to wear. He put on me some seashells, you know, seashells. As I I, I take my bath, I bathe, the hair, <laughs> he just comes, check up on me, tell me that this is what is happening. Um, during the process of me but, uh, ta uh, taking that ritual bath, it, like I used to be called by his place because there used to be a lot a lot of all Kwakubon Sam's patients, there was a lot of pastors. There was a lot of pastors seeking spiritual power. I didn't understand why I had to receive Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior while I'm still into younger stuff because I was still a younger. But my trip to Ghana made me realize why. I remember calling out this Jesus. I asked him that, I hear that you are a Lord and Savior. I hear that, Jesus, you are life. I hear that you are all-knowing. Come down. Come, see your children. They are going to deceive people. With powers, they receive from San Gomas. You know, I, I was there and younger for my own younger uh, issues and here are pastors from Zimbabwe, South Africa, Benin, Cameroon, you know, San Gomas, Nigeria, I said, God, how come your children, you are allowing them? I said, show yourself. You know, I was praying inside. I was shocked. I saw them being mocked. Goku marks us. I have my own arrow here from Goku Bonsam. Past us a mark. Given rings. I had my rings on my thumbs. We all jump the fire. 
Kwaku uses a gun and shoot her that your name will become as big as the arrow he shoots out. I saw pastors in the tribe. I came across Kwakubon Sam's conversation with one South African big pastor. Because Kwaku cannot read well. That's why he likes voice notes. What disappointed me is the things, stories, pictures he was telling me about certain pastors in South Africa. One day he woke me up at night to go with me to a river. He said he's going to pick up some plants. The same gun he uses to shoot for after every ritual was the gun he was carrying 24 hours. Because Kwaku was scared of TB Joshua, the late TB Joshua. May his soul continue to rest in peace. May his soul rest in peace. In Gwako's house, I can't say we were his prostitutes. He would sleep with us anyhow he wanted. Far away from home. The stink. Taking advantage of every woman that comes because he is powerful. So we thought. <laughs> I saw a man treating women like. Whew. There were fights between Kwaku and his wives. There was a time he took me to another ritual where there were, it was a traditional healer ceremony and they were eating dogs, you know, they were dancing where I, he was introducing me. These are the three witches. They were, what, I had to meet different people in that ceremony with his beautiful pregnant wife. He wanted me to sleep with them. I got to know Kwaku. I got to understand that you do not gossip or talk about him because me and this other beautiful friend of mine, um, we used to call, we even tried to escape. She wanted to help me. We couldn't be free with her because uh, he had told us that there are, there are dwarves because in his house they are short, like, you know, the length of a door. There are doors that are very small like that. 
the dwarves will tell you the things that you say about him. I saw everything that he did with pastors and he told me everything. He taught me everything. I know that he's not meant to, 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 to eat uh, certain foods with certain oil. He is not meant to, to eat food from certain women. I know he is not meant to walk in the rain. The rules that he turned and gave me, certain rules he gave me. Oh my goodness. I got to know a lot about Wakubotsa. A healer I had gone to take powers from, I was now counseling. I was his counselor, his social work, his mar marital problems. I remember this one time said, I'm come. And he must sleep with me because when he sleeps with me, his things are working properly. At that time, he had two beautiful wives. Pregnant, heavily pregnant wives. But he was still sleeping with us, his patients. And I was here telling him that, hey, sir, I need to go. My ancestors are not happy. And they will turn you upside down. He said, no, I want to extend your passport. He extended my passport. He wanted me to stay in Kumasi. Open a shrine for me. I saw pastors that came to him. Hmm. <laughs> Ay, God. He gave me God. To me, everything about him was wow power <laughs> because i saw pastors practicing die in the name of jesus with chickens and chickens were dying and in the whole process what kwako does is video recording every process in order to blackmail and manipulate Pastors that go to him. Going to Kwaku for me was a blessing in disguise. Because I learned of the number one fetish priest most feared. I learned his weaknesses. I asked God questions. But God kept answering How T.B. Joshua and his people came to a hotel and a maid overheard a conversation of them trying to kill him. What a lie. And people believed him. I do not stand for false prophets. I do not stand for false pastors i am standing here to say repent for the kingdom of god is near but i am saying how do you as a christian believe a native doctor and begin to pass judgment on your own fellow brother when jesus the master you claim to say serve says love one another correct each other, gentle. Do not make Wakubon some famous and proud. Because
Because number one, Kwaku is a soul that we must be praying for to come back to the Lord. Because Kwaku quotes the Bible. Why? Because he was a Seventh-day Adventist member. Yes, at a certain time, he had powers. Then I'll tell you later how everything of Kwaku came to ruin. And how he started now to use 419 manipulation to do people. Because that's exactly what he is. A 419 schema. A traditional healer who at some point had powers. He even tried crossing uh, parts because he uses a perfume from the USA, which he used to go collect with me. Hey, <laughs> my dear friend, it's getting heated up. We shall talk more about it when I come back. Kwaku <laughs> Bonsam. He is definitely, most definitely, going to hear this. And when he does, I think it's the beginning of my storytelling. Because he had warned me in 2018 not to come out. Because after Ghana, my dear friends, I went home with his gods. I'm not supposed to attend a funeral with the rules given to me. I'm not supposed to walk in the rain. I'm not. I had so many rules given unto me by Kwakobosam with his gods. Some of them I was not supposed to, to, to hold with money in my pockets because they kill they'll strike you dead i was not supposed to wear um, like my rings i was not supposed to point people angry or say things so yeah guys on my next episode <laughs> we devour more on what was next stay tuned and keep Pray. In my language, we say, it's a bit to elaborate. Go like, Barry, it's a bit. Don't fear anything that passes. In simple terms, never fear anything that passes. And in conclusion, some want to know. There are names of people that have been to Ghana that I know. Why? Simply because Gwagu trusted me enough to give me his phone. He uses voice notes. Some people would send him text. So when he sent text, I'll be able to read through some, some <laughs> messages. That's how I got to see the message of who, eh, who, eh, who, and the South African celebrities. Especially the gospel genre. But I'm not saying let's judge them. They are our brothers and sisters who need prayers to repent. It's as simple as that. Kwaku wants to use their names to become big. I'm not going to be here to mention them. No. I'm only going to tell them out there that I went to Kwaku. I know about you. Just repent. Seek the Lord. Thank you, friends. I uh, hope you enjoyed today's episode. But there's just a bit. I'm coming. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. I love you so, so much. And forgive me. I'm still working on this YouTube thing. And I'll still keep on changing platforms until I find the right spot for me. Today I'm using, um, I'm close to the window. I'm using that light again. I hope I find something. I don't want something that makes me look like a, no one no offend people you know those women that like being yellow yeah <laughs> thank you so much god bless you